Esther in chapter number 8, starting in verse number 1. Once you found your place, go ahead and stand. Let's honor the Word of God together today as we read down through the first eight verses of this chapter. Esther, chapter number 8, starting in verse 1. The Bible says, on that, on that day did the king Ahasuerus give the house of Haman, the Jew's enemy, unto Esther the queen. And Mordecai came before the king, uh, for Esther had told what he was unto her. And the king took off his ring, which he had taken from Haman, and gave it unto Mordecai. And Esther set Mordecai over the house of Haman. And Esther spake yet again before the king, and fell down at his feet, and besought him with tears to put away the mischief of Haman the Agagite, and his device that he had devised against the Jews. Then the king held out the golden scepter toward Esther. So Esther arose and stood before the king, and said, If it please the king... And if I have found favor in his sight, and the thing seem right before the king, and I be pleasing in his eyes, let it be written to reverse the letters devised by Haman, the son of Hamadatha the Agagite, which he wrote to destroy the Jews which are in all the king's provinces. For how can I endure to see the evil that shall come unto my people, or how can I endure to see the destruction of my kindred? Then the king Ahasuerus said unto Esther the queen, and to Mordecai the Jew, Behold, I have given Esther the house of Haman, and him they have hanged upon the gallows, because he laid his hand upon the Jews. Write ye also for the Jews, as it liketh you in the king's name, and seal it with the king's ring, for the writing which is written in the king's name and sealed with the king's ring may no man reverse. Amen. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we do thank you for your goodness to us, and there's so much to unpack in this passage of Scripture. I, we, we haven't the time probably to do that all in one service, but we're going to attempt to draw as much blessing, as much application out of it as we possibly can to help us to get closer uh, to you. We do thank you for this story that we know is real life that really happened. We thank you so much for the provision for, the, uh, for Esther and Mordecai and for the Jews during this crazy time. We're, we're thankful, Lord, that we can look at this uh, story in its completion and be able to see from start to finish how you worked uh, out at the same time, understanding that uh, in real time, they were not exactly sure of how you were going to work out their victory. And so, Father, I know that there's times in our life we might not know exactly what's going on um, and through the difficulties that we are enduring, uh, but we can have a confidence by scriptures like these that you are working out your will in our life. And so I pray, Father, you'd help us to see that tonight as we look through this portion of Scripture, as we see the winning side, as we see uh, the, the victory um, and, uh, and how you're working in the lives of, uh, of your people in this, in this day. And uh, Father, I pray that our hearts would be tender to your will and way. Help me to be a blessing to your people. Help guard my every word. I ask all these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I think it's right for us. I think it's good for us to take just a brief, just a, just a, a quick moment or so to think about the, the different emotions, the range of emotions, if you will, uh, that God's people, the Jews, Esther, Mordecai, uh, and all of really uh, the Jews had to deal with up until this point or had, had went through up until this point. They were, as we've talked about several times, we make sure we've kind of, we, we've uh, made sure we understand that they're in Persia, not because uh, not because God was rewarding them, amen, they're in Persia because of judgment, they're in Persia because they've walked outside of the boundaries of God's word, and after warning, after warning, God had done as he said he would, uh, and judged them, brought them into captivity as a, as a uh, judgment, as a punishment for their, for their sin, for their wickedness, and their stepping away from him. Uh, they were living there as, uh, in, in, uh, with other Jews, living there captive in Persia. And, and life, there, there was certainly some times where life was, I'm sure, okay. It probably, it was not always terrible, uh, but they were not free citizens, amen? They were, not, uh, they were not living in freedom. They were not living in liberty. They certainly were not living in their own homeland. Esther, of course, is then elevated to queen of the, of the kingdom, uh, and uh, Mordecai uh, uh, provides information that ends up saving the king's life. Now, it's when at, at this point in their life, I'm sure they're thinking to themselves, man, this is, this is looking better. I mean, we have, we have a, a, one of our own in the, uh, in the king's house, and, uh, but that, of course, that sense of excitement 
uh, that feeling of victory uh, was not lived for very long because they had an enemy. Haman, of course, is promoted to second in command there, and he convinces the king to write that decree calling for the complete extermination of the Jews within that kingdom. Uh, and in that uh, uh, desperation, amen, in that, in that um, the, the, the concern and by the encouragement of Esther, they resolve to fast and pray uh, before Esther has decided, as she has decided to uh, intercede before the king. She's granted that meeting with the king, and Haman, uh, and Haman is there as well, and, and uh, that uh, was to discuss the, what, what that decree was about and what all that meant. And that night, of course, we, as uh, previous studies, we, we looked at that night uh, after that first initial banquet, that night Esther, uh, Ahasuerus was unable to sleep, and he calls for those books of the Chronicles to be read. And, uh, and in that time, it was revealed to him that Mordecai had not been rewarded. For his good deed, and which which led to the saving of the king's life, and so Haman, uh, uh, after his, uh, we know the story of Haman uh, um, uh, telling King Ahasuerus how he ought to honor the one who he chooses to honor, thinking that it was going to be him that the, that King Ahasuerus was talking about, uh, was instructed, of course, to honor Mordecai with all those things that he had listed off before all the residents there uh, in Shushan. Knowing, of course, now at Haman at this point, he's got, some, he's got an idea uh, that his plans are now working against him, that things aren't going exactly his way. way. In fact, his, his uh, family, his wife and friends prophesy that things are going in the wrong direction for him. Uh, Haman, of course, pleads his case uh, in that unusual way uh, before Esther after that meeting where, where, his, where his wickedness is brought to the forefront. And of course, as Ahasuerus says, angered by the forwardness of, of Haman. He calls for Haman to be hanged there, and, and it just so happens that he ends up being hanged upon the, the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. And that's where we pick up in our text uh, this evening. This certainly, uh, the things certainly have changed. Amen. A, a roller coaster ride of emotions, if you will, over these uh, several chapters. And, and in the, we, we need to understand through this whole story, these are real life people that had really had a decree brought against them to uh, exterminate them. And uh, they think, talk about, Mr. Reed, talk about anxiety, amen, uh, knowing that you're going to be murdered, be killed on a certain day, uh, that would definitely cause some, some fear and some concern. And, and, uh, and yet now or things are changing, amen. They've changed in a very short amount of time. But Esther and Mordecai know the Jews still, according to the decree, remain in a perilous situation, amen. Uh, that decree, it could not be altered, amen? And that deadline is now only nine months away. It's still, it's still taking course. The decree had been wrote. It still uh, had to be cared for, and God uh, had been faithful up until this point. And, uh, of course, we'll see as we continue in Scripture that He will continue to work out His good for His people. And so by the grace of God this evening, uh, let's consider the phases of this, of this uh, difficult yet, yet good day, hopeful day, uh, as I preach on this, on this thought, this gracious new day, this gracious new day. The first thing we see in verses 1 and 2, we see, we see there was a day of promotion. Amen. So after the, the demise of Haman, uh, the enemy of the Jews, things were, were quickly changing for the favor of, of Esther and, and, and Mordecai. Amen. And notice that, uh, that presentation or that first part of verse number 1. The Bible says, on that day... Did the king of Ahasuerus give the house of Haman, the Jew's enemy, unto Esther the queen? So it was a custom, uh, customary thing in Persia there for the property and the, uh, and the assets of that condemned criminals to become the property of the king following their execution. And so Ahasuerus took that as, as that had become his now in his, uh, in his execution. Uh, he had gave all of Haman's assets uh, to Esther the queen. Uh, and, and, and we can take, we can go back to a previous passage of scripture where we saw Haman was willing to offer up that 10,000 10, talents of silver to a, accomplish his evil plans. And we can come to a conclusion that he was not a poor man. Uh, he was a rather wealthy man. Amen. And, uh, and so uh, he, he would, of course, he would have probably had servants and, and, uh, and, and assets and, and money and, and, uh, and property. And, uh, and, and, uh, and others uh, that, uh, that attended uh, unto him. And all of that, through the king, become property 
of Esther. Amen. Listen, God will take care of his own. Amen. And, uh, and I think about this, this passage of scripture and, and we, we're trying to go, we're kind of going back and forth from the simple practical application, but also looking at the allegory and getting glimpses uh, of the allegory or the bigger picture of the book of Esther, because it does deal with, uh, it deals with the future program for, of, of God for the children of Israel. And at the same time, we can, we know that that's it. We can still find great practical application for you and I as born again believers. Um, but when we see that bigger picture and we consider that there's a, there's a bigger picture going on uh, as that story is, is unfolding here, we know Esther is a picture of redeemed Israel. Amen. And, and we do know that there's a time where, where uh, they will, they will uh, inherit, they will be able to enjoy uh, that which once was ruled by the prince or the, 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 uh, the, the God of this world, the lowercase g-o-d of this world. Amen. And so it's a blessing, though, when we think about, we think about how, how God is working out this, this future program, even way back here in the book of Esther, amen, we can, we can look at this and we can, we can see different portions and different uh, parts of this story and say, wow, this is, this is a blessing. This is yet to come, but it's going to come, amen. And just as, uh, just as uh, Haman, the enemy of the Jews in that day, uh, was, got his reward, uh, the devil someday will get his reward, amen, and he will be someday cast into that lake of fire, uh, and he will be in torment for all eternity, amen. Uh, but we also see from that practical application point, God will take care of those that belong to him, amen, uh, even as he, he plans to continue to take care of his people, uh, the Jewish people, and he's got a future program for them. Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a blessing to know that he takes care of his people and even uses what we would consider unlikely sources to accomplish his divine will for us amen so we might not be promised great earthly estates or great wealth uh, on this side of glory and i certainly wouldn't preach that uh, or teach that i don't believe the bible uh, uh, gives that uh, impression to me at all uh, we can rest and have a confidence especially as we talked about this morning we can enjoy the provision of christ in our lives amen god does meet our needs god does take very good care of us. Amen. Uh, we are, I mean, we think about eternal uh, provision. We have been purchased by his shed blood. Amen. On Calvary, our sins are gone. Our sins are washed away. We are eternally secure in Jesus Christ. Amen. We have been placed in the body of Christ. We have been, we're, we're able to, uh, we enjoy the privilege of being partakers in that divine inheritance. Amen. Uh, there is great provision. There is great peace uh, and provision belonging to the Lord. That's a blessing. Amen. So we see the, the presentation there. We go on there in the last part of verse number one, and we see the recognition. And Mordecai came before the king, for Esther had told what he was unto her. So Mordecai was called here to come before the king, and Esther, uh, according to scripture here, had revealed unto King Ahasuerus that Mordecai was her cousin and her adoptive father. Now, like I said in early, the last study of the study before, I saw some commentaries talking about wondering how King Ahasuerus didn't know, and maybe he did, and blah, 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 all that stuff. I don't see it in Scripture, so I'm just going to assume he didn't know. Uh, but for those that, may, uh, that, that wondered how in the world he could not know prior to the decree being signed, we can say now it is clear that he knows the relationship that Mordecai had with Esther. Amen? Uh, he, was, he was recognized for his relationship with the, with the queen. Uh, Mordecai was already favored, for the good deed, for, the, for his, his coming forward and, and helping save the king's life. But now this, this simply added to his favor and acceptance with the king. Listen, we, 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 had, uh, we had no goodness to claim. We have no goodness to claim. We had no goodness to claim uh, in and of ourselves. And uh, we too have been accepted of God because of our relationship with Jesus Christ. What a wonderful privilege to be accepted of God. I think about my wickedness and I realize that I don't deserve anything good and I have so much in Christ. Uh, amen. I don't, I mean, because of my wickedness, I don't deserve another meal, but I have eternity with him. Amen. I, I don't, I don't deserve another breath. And yet I can bring my needs to God in prayer through my Savior, Jesus Christ. And I can, I can have a confidence. I, I don't just have the privilege to bring my needs to him. I can have a confidence that he already knows what those needs are. And he wants to hear them. And he will meet 
those needs. Amen? It's pretty exciting. And we could go on and on in that just one point. We could park there for a good long time. God has been good to us. Amen? I'm thankful I'm accepted of the Father through my relationship with the Son, Jesus Christ. We see not only that recognition, but we go on in verse 2 and we see the elevation. And the king took off his ring, which he had taken from Haman, and gave it unto Mordecai. And Esther set Mordecai over the house of Haman. So through his faithfulness and through uh, the divine favor of God, Mordecai had the opportunity to be elevated to this position of authority and prominence in the land. He got to, just as Haman did uh, not too long ago, received that signet ring of, the, of, of Ahasuerus, which, which gave him official authority within the kingdom. Amen. He, he was set over the house of Haman and, and all the wealth and provision that came along with it. Hey, listen, keep in mind, Mordecai's position and rank, they were based on the authority and the pleasure of King Ahasuerus. Amen? Listen, he had no power apart from, from that which the king provided. All that, all that we have, amen, all that we, all that we possess comes from the good hand of the Lord. Amen? And it, and it comes according to his will, according to his good pleasure. Uh, amen? Apart from him, we, have, we, we don't have anything of lasting value. Listen, he is the source not only of our salvation, but he's the source of our life. He's the source of our provision. He's the source of our hope. As I'm also reminded, looking back and considering that allegory of, uh, of Esther there, where Mordecai is a picture of Christ. Listen, Jesus came in humility and was rejected of his own. We look at Philippians chapter 2 and starting in verse 6, the Bible says, Who being in the form of God, thought it not robber to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. If, as we look at this, this allegory of, of the book of Esther, and we see how Asterisk is the is a picture of God, and, and uh, Mordecai is a picture of Jesus Christ in this future program uh, of, of God for his people, uh, we see a glimpse of this uh, exaltation taking place here uh, as Mordecai went into the king's presence that day from sitting in the king's gate and he comes out one in authority. We know our Savior came and humbly went to the cross for, for sin, uh, but the next time he comes, he's not coming as a, as a humble babe in the manger. Amen? He is coming as a conquering king. Uh, he, he, he is coming as the judge. And uh, what a blessing to think about that exaltation and kind of seeing that correlation uh, between the two, the allegory and, of course, real life and what we see in Scripture as God's uh, future plan and his plan of exalting the Savior Jesus Christ. Someday, uh, someday, this is way on a way bigger picture than Mordecai simply getting the signet ring from, and that was a big deal, don't get me wrong, but on a much more eternal and much bigger scale, uh, our Savior, folks, everyone, everybody that has ever lived will, will, uh, will uh, claim uh, the name of Jesus Christ, will, will, will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen? We see, uh, we think about the, uh, the things might not be going uh, the way you want uh, them to go. Things might be not going exactly how you plan. But, but listen, remember that in Christ we are already on the winning side. Amen? Listen, Mordecai may not have been uh, able to enjoy the same confidence in his situation, right? But, but we don't have to worry because we already have a complete revelation of God and we know that we win. Mordecai didn't get to enjoy all of those at that time. Amen. A lot of these things were up in the air. A lot of these things were, uh, you know, I, I'd like to think just him living by faith and just 
uh, uh, having a confidence that God was going to do something, but not maybe not knowing exactly what that was. As Brother Jonathan was testifying today, we know, amen, we know what God's plan is. There is absolutely, I don't care how crazy 2021 gets, there is absolutely no reason for the child of God to worry. Absolutely no good reason, because we know we're on the winning side, amen. Uh, we've already won. It's a, we're, we're already victorious in Him. And we have nothing to fear. We have nothing to be worried about. We have nothing to, let's say, no matter how difficult or how crazy it might get, no matter what sort of decrees may be passed down through our government this year or in the years to come, God will care for his people. Amen? Let's, let us not worry. Let us not worry about uh, what's going on in our day. Let us have confidence in those things we know. Hey, in Mordecai's, state, in Mordecai's day, we, we can understand maybe a little concern. He didn't know, but we, we get to see the whole story, amen, we see it in scripture. We might not know exactly how we get there, but we know what the end result is. Number two here in verses three through six, we see that it was also a day of intercession. So Esther knew that that, that decree was still in, in place, amen, that decree had, had, been, had been signed by the king, and, uh, and remember, listen, this is a, a picture for us, and we'll see this in a little bit here, but the, the king being a picture of God, his decree is a picture of the word of God. Amen. And, and we see in this, in this passage of scripture, Esther knew that decree remained in effect and she had to act if the Jews were going to be spared of this, of this, uh, this uh, horrible death. The, she, she again, she comes again to the king and intercedes again for uh, her people. We see in verse 3, we see the appeal. The Bible says here in verse 3, and Esther spake yet again before the king, and fell down at his feet and brought him with te- and I'm sorry and besought him with tears to put away the mischief of Haman the Agagite and his device that he had devised against the Jews. So knowing the consequences that were here for her that that were that were uh, in place or uh, the consequences of that decree for her people, she makes this compassionate plea with tears. Amen. With a broken heart. Uh, makes this compassionate plea for the Jews at the feet of the king. She falls at his feet and weeping for the salvation of her people. Hey, listen, I I still remember the day. I might not have been weeping over my lost condition because I just, I guess I'm, everybody, I guess, uh, approaches a different way. I was certainly brokenhearted about my lost condition. I might not have been crying and, 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 and blubbering, but I certainly knew that I wasn't right with God. And I remember that day, I was, it was a red chair, just like the ones we got in this auditorium where I buried my face in that thing. And I said, dear God, I know I'm a sinner and I know that I'm lost. I, I, I need your grace and I need salvation. And I asked Jesus that day to, uh, to, to be my savior. Amen. I, re, I remember calling out to him uh, for salvation. And uh, listen, apart from his, from his grace, amen, I, I knew death was certain for me. I, it was it was. The Holy Spirit of God convicted me uh, of my lost condition that day, amen. And uh, like Esther, we need to, we need to share the burden uh, of those who are still apart from Christ as Savior, amen. I think it'd be a good thing if God's people got brokenhearted over the, over the need of the lost. Esther was, in, Esther was fine at this point, amen. I, I mean, I, we, we, we could argue that the decree still covered her, uh, but I doubt very much, I doubt very much that she, she that, I mean, she was, she was the queen, but her people, her people were in, in trouble. Amen. They were, they, the, this decree was still upon them. They, they were in, in, in great uh, need uh, of, of an intercessor, and she was praying uh, for, for them, or she was, she was interceding uh, to the king for them. It would be a blessing if God's people got a burden in their heart for the lost. Amen. If we get a burden in our heart for those that are yet to trust Jesus Christ as Savior, amen, get out there and get the gospel message, but also uh, in that brokenness, bring uh, the, the, the loss to the Lord in prayer. Amen. I think it'd be important. We see the assurance that was given in verse number four. We see her appeal in verse three. We see the assurance in verse number four. The Bible says, then the king held out the golden scepter toward Esther. Amen. So Esther arose, the Bible says, and stood before the king. Esther again uh, the favor of, of Ahasuerus, and, and uh, before, uh, he, it, we, see, we saw that once before, he had extended that, that uh, golden scepter, amen, and once again, uh, he extends this golden scepter uh, to Esther, and, uh, and, and, and thank the Lord, we saw that 
uh, before he extended that, that golden scepter and, and offering assurance of his willingness to grant her request. And, and now he has done that again, amen, uh, given that permission for Esther to, to speak. And so she rose and she stood before the king. Uh, listen, we, we've, we've talked about this before, and yet I remain thankful for the assurance that we enjoy in Jesus Christ. Amen. What a bold, what an opportunity, what a blessing to know that we, we can have a confidence when we approach the throne of grace at any time for any need, knowing that in Christ that scepter is extended to us. Amen. Knowing that we have opportunity and privilege to bring our needs to him, knowing that the Lord will hear and respond to our plea. Now, that, that response might be no sometimes because it's for our good and for his glory. Amen but we can have a confidence that he will respond. We see not only that, that assurance there in verse number four, but as we move on to verse five, we also see the analysis here. The Bible says in verse five, and said, if it pleased the king, and if I have found favor in his sight, and the things seem right before the king, and, and, and I be pleasing in his eyes, let it be written to reverse the letters devised by Haman, the son of Hamadatha, the Agagite, which he wrote to destroy the Jews, which are in all the king's provinces. This was the request that, that, that Esther desired to make at the meeting with the king uh, and Haman. So, so calling uh, upon his compassion for her and, and, and the favor that she had received, Esther's requesting that this decree to destroy the Jews would be reversed. She, she, she begged... Amen. She she pled uh, for the king, uh, for the, pled to the king for the lives of her people. Amen. Listen, the, the king may have have been may may not have known about Esther's lineage up until this point, but now he is fully aware of who she is, to whom she belongs, and the desperation that she and her people are now in. She's talked about. She's told him the details of her life, and she's offered uh, her request. Listen, our Lord is not limited in wisdom or knowledge. Amen. Asterisk, he was limited. He only knew so much, and, and, and he's certainly a picture of, of God, but only a picture, but not, not God. Amen. Our Lord is not limited in wisdom or knowledge. He knows us better than we know ourselves. Amen. And yet he desires to make our request known unto him. He already knows the difficulties that we're going through. He already knows the needs that we have, and yet he wants us to bring those needs to him. Ahasuerus did not know what Esther was going to bring to him. He did not know ahead of time what the, the need was, what the request was going to be. He granted and gave her the opportunity to bring that request to him, but he didn't know aforetime what that was. God already knows what we're going to ask before we ask it, and yet he still wants us to bring those needs to him. Amen? He wants us to bring our needs before him in prayer. We see that the, in verse number 6, we go on to see the anguish here. The Bible says, For how can I endure to see the evil that shall come upon my people? Or how can I endure to see the destruction of my kindred? So Esther, she talks about here, she reveals the, the desperation uh, in her heart. Amen? She, she cannot, she don't want to see this sort of evil and this sort of destruction come upon her people. And so she is pleading with the king to reverse the decree uh, to spare the lives of the Jews. Hey, we live in this, in a, in a, in a, in a physical body, and we're often uh, uh, moved and deeply moved at times by the physical needs and the suffering of, sufferings of others. Amen? Listen, we, we should definitely be willing to do all that we can to, to uh, alleviate, uh, to minimize the suffering, if we have the opportunity to do it, those are, all, those are all good things, amen? However, as I read this verse, I was, I was convicted. Esther offered a passionate plea to save her people from destruction. Amen? Listen, we all, we all know those who are unsaved. We all have folks in our, in, in, uh, amongst our loved ones, our friends and our loved ones, who are yet to have trusted Christ as Savior. And in that, in that uh, rejection of Christ, in that lack of knowing Christ as Savior, they will spend a Christless eternity apart uh, from salvation in that place called hell. 
we are easily moved by physical needs. And, and, and when we see a physical need, and, and listen, it's, it's okay to be moved by those physical needs, but we're easily moved by those physical needs, but oftentimes, oftentimes we're simply not bothered by the great spiritual needs of our day. And can I tell you, the spiritual needs are greater than the physical needs. Amen? We've, I've said this before. If, if, if we have the opportunity to meet a physical need, we should do so. But we should also be looking to use the meeting of that physical need to meet the spiritual needs behind the physical need. I mean, all through the New Testament, when we, especially when we see the life and the ministry of our Savior, his, his working through those physical needs were to show a greater picture of the spiritual needs, to prove his authority, to prove his deity, but also to, to show a picture of the need of man and the salvation through him. Amen? Listen, the, the, when we think about, when we consider eternity, and we might not be able to fully wrap our brains around what eternity is, but, but, but in reality, the physical needs are minor compared to the eternal needs, amen, of those that are lost and undone in their sin. I hold, Listen, I, we, we must, it is important, especially in this crazy day we live in, more than ever in our life, we need to develop a burden in our heart for the lost. I cannot over-preach that. I, if, if, listen, if you get annoyed by me preaching the need for personal evangelism, you've got a heart problem. I, 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 there's a lot of areas I can confess my faults and my sins before you, amen? I, I, but I, there, is, there is no way that I can overemphasize the need for being soul winners in this day. We must get, we must get a burden and develop a burden for our land, for our communities, uh, for the people we come in contact with, the Walmart lady, the, the, the Speedway uh, fella or lady, wh wh whoever we come in contact, if they'll listen to us, we ought to be sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. We see a, a great burden. Esther had a great burden for her people. And thank the Lord for that picture. Amen. Hey, do we have a burden for those around us? Do you have a burden like you ought? I mean, every one of us can grow in that area. So, so the answer is we, we can grow. But do you, I mean, are you even close? Are you even surrendered to that thought? Are you dismissive to that sort of preaching? We say we're not Calvinist, but we said, I've said this before. A lot of times we practice Calvinism way better than we practice anything else. Amen. Somebody else, somebody else will tell them. God will, God will get his message to them somehow. That's Calvinism. Amen. That's already pre, it's already taken care of. We don't have to, we don't have to intercede because Listen, I believe with all of my heart that God has given us the responsibility to get the message of Christ to a lost and dying people. Amen. Now, we might not fully understand the balance between his sovereignty and our personal responsibility. We might not be able to fully put that in words exactly what that means and, and, and what that looks like. But we do have a confidence from Scripture that we have been commissioned to give the gospel of Jesus Christ to a lost and dying people. Amen. We must be faithful. We get them the message. The Holy Spirit of God does the rest of that work. Amen. We're, we're not the ones saving people. But we, but we must be faithful to get that message out there. A lot of times we go, eh, they're going to say no. They're going to be mean to me. They're going to curse me out. They're going to they're gonna reject me. I don't like rejection either. But we must be faithful uh, in getting that gospel message. Thirdly, lastly, let me hurry through this last thought here. In verses 7 and 8, we see there was also a day of alteration. So after hearing Esther's request, the king offered a solution. Amen. Notice this, this confirmation at first part of verse 7. The Bible says, Then the king Ahasuerus said unto Esther the queen and to Mordecai the Jew, Behold, I have given Esther the house of Haman, and him they have hanged upon the gallows, because he laid his hand Upon the Jews, Ahasuerus publicly declared that Esther and Mordecai had received the house of Haman and all of his assets. He was hanged there on the gallows for uh, laying his hands upon Esther uh, in an unfavorable way, desiring to kill those Jews. And by doing so, uh, of course, he was guilty of laying his hands upon all the Jews within his providence, uh, within his that that uh, his land, uh, the king revealed the wickedness of Haman and how his evil uh, desires 
influenced his life. Listen, there would be no question regarding the, the, the charges that were brought, uh, brought against Haman. His execution was explained for all to hear. All understood why Haman was killed. Amen? Listen, uh, the enemy continues to work against the, the children of God today. And there is still, he is still, he's working frantically because he knows the time's drawing, drawing near for him. Amen? And, and when we think about the, you know, the, the, the allegory of Esther, our, uh, this, this, this picture of, of God's future program for the children of Israel, you know, uh, hey, uh, the, the, the devil, uh, Haman being a picture of the devil, he also, his time is drawing near. And his execution has been explained. And we know exactly why and where uh, he will spend eternity uh, because, of, because, of his, uh, because of his wickedness. The enemy continues to work against the children of God even today. Amen. He, he does everything that he can to, to hinder us, to defeat us, to discourage us. There's no doubt about that. Amen. He knows his time is limited, and I think he's working more, more, more uh, uh, trying to be more efficient in this day, uh, working even more in our day to deceive as many as he possibly can because the day is drawing nigh for him. Now listen, he, 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 he has deceived a lot. There's no question about that. He has certainly contributed to them stepping into eternity, rejecting Jesus as Savior, uh, and then uh, experiencing that eternal damnation separated from God. But the Lord will have the final word. Amen. Satan will eventually be bound and cast in that lake of fire for all eternity. His works of, of uh, d death and destruction, uh, they will come to an end someday as he suffers apart from God in that place of torment. Amen? Haman got his as the enemy of the Jews. The enemy of mankind will someday get his as well. Amen? We see in verse number 8, we see the cert certification here. The Bible says, Write ye also for the Jews as it liketh you in the king's name and seal it with the king's ring. For the writing which is written in the king's name and sealed with the king's ring may no man reverse. So according to the Persian law, once a king's decree was written and sealed with the king's ring, it could not be altered or reversed. So the decree had to be, had to be carried out unless there was a new law written to counter that old law. Ahasuerus knew that he, uh, that, that, that he authorized Esther and Mordecai to write this new law as, as it pleased them so that it would counter that law that was motivated or written by Haman. Once it was written and sealed, this new law would supersede that old law. Esther's request was fully granted, and she was able to now uh, have that authority to write a new decree that would spare the Jews within the kingdom. Now listen, remember the king is a, the king of Hasuerus, a picture of God. Remember, his decree is a picture of God's word. When God says it, that settles it, amen? This, I, I think of the old law that condemned and the new law that by grace redeems. I, thought the, I, I think about that, the, the old law that was given through Moses, it, it proved man's inability to meet God's expectations. Listen, there's still some out there that are trying to live by the law or some form of it. It's not even, the, it's not even fully the same as because they're not even doing the sacrifices like they used to do. And so they're not even, if they say they, they're living by the law, they've, they, they've done away with and they've explained away those, those actual, those physical sacrifices, those days of atonement and the sacrifice that took place on those days of atonement. So that old law given, that was given through Moses simply proved that man can't meet God's expectation of per perfect righteousness. Could you imagine, could you imagine as a studier, as, as one that genuinely had a burden in their heart to try to obey the law in its entirety? Have you read the Old Testament? I mean, how tough would that be? And, and to, to me, when I go through that as, as a New Testament Christian, it, it very clearly and very plainly 
brings attention to me. I'm thankful for his grace because there's absolutely no way that I could fill this, it, full, fulfill this in its entirety. The new law of grace given through Jesus' payment on the cross proves God's love for sinful man and his desire to redeem us from our sinful condition. That old law was not rewritten, it was fulfilled in Jesus Christ. He was the, o- he was the only one who could live up to God's expectation of perfect sinlessness. Our Savior fulfilled that law that we could not and then died in our place as that sacrifice for our sin. The saved by grace enjoy comfort in in the sovereign authority of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. His word is eternal and sure. It it, it will never be challenged. It will never be changed. Amen. there's, There's folks out there that'll choose to deny it. There's folks out there that will attempt to rewrite it. Amen. There's a lot of folks out there that will reject it, but his word will stand. We have no fear of anyone or anything altering the precious promises and provisions that we enjoy in Jesus Christ. If you are saved by grace, if you have by faith received Jesus to be your personal Savior, you are secure in the Lord. Amen. His word has declared that wonderful truth and it will never, ever change. We're secure in him. There was, listen, there was, there was a sense of security in the writing of the new law for, for Esther and for Mordecai and for the rest of the Jews. But the fact of the matter is, Ahasuerus was someday going to die and things could change. But in the, in, in the bigger picture, God's word it's settled. There is no changing. God will never die. God will, God will never be passing on to some new leader. He, all, he, is, he is the self-existent one. He is the one who exists in eternity past and eternity in the future. Amen? I have no worries of anybody ever writing a law or being able to perform some sort of action that will supersede the promises of my Lord. They can't be changed. Amen? They, they, there's attempts, but in the end, they cannot be changed. Amen? Let me close. Now, things, certainly they looked, they looked hopeless for Esther and Mordecai at times. They, when, we, when we think about the story as, and we go through that story, it's, listen, they, they, they definitely seemed as if they were going through some pretty, pretty crazy times. Hey, listen, they were never forsaken. God was working out a plan in in their day. He was, listen, in that time, in in a literal sense, he was protecting Israel from physical death. While at the same time showing a picture, a bigger picture of his future program for Israel. Pretty amazing how all that stuff works out, amen? Listen, can I tell you, God is always at work. His plans are always being fulfilled according to his desire we not, might not be able to fully understand all the details of how his future program is going to work amen but we can have a confidence that he is working out his plans in this day just as he was in the day of esther he is still working in 2021 i, I think about i think about 2021 and some of the, all the crazy rumors you hear it's you know, I've, I, if you study Christian history and you study the history of, of God's people, when God's people come under persecution, that's when they grow. I don't know, I almost look at 2021 like, as an opportunity. And some of the craziness may be, may be going to come down the line as an opportunity. Because under pressure, under pressure, the, those, that, 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 those that are born-again believers will have the opportunity to realize what we've taken for granted for so many years. The liberties that we've enjoyed for so many years, and yet we just, like, mechanically just going to church on Sundays and doing this and doing that and serving God and just very half-heartedly, but, you know, it keeps everybody else off our back and we appear to be living for the Lord. 
I'll tell you, when we come under, under some, some persecution, we, it, we, times get a little tougher for us, uh, it, it's, it's, it's going to be real. Amen. And what we've enjoyed for so long, it'll be, it, it, there'll be a reality of the liberties that we've enjoyed. And I, listen, I look at the difficulties that may be on the forefront. I don't know. We don't know exactly what's going to happen. But I look at those difficulties as an opportunity. Listen, God's just going to keep working out His will. We have nothing to worry about. God's going to do something through it. Amen? There is, there is hope in the Lord. He never changes. Amen? We might not be able to control what, what we face in this life, but we do serve one who has all power and all authority. Would you stand with me? I don't know how God's helped you today, but during this time of invitation, I certainly want to invite you to an old-fashioned altar and just uh, give the opportunity for you to, uh, to just uh, come to Him and bring your needs to Him. Amen? You might be, all the craziness of this day may be causing you to have all kinds of worry and, and, and struggles in that area. Listen, I just want to assure you, we have nothing to worry about. God's working out His plan. I don't care how crazy it gets and how scary we might be, or how, how, much, how much temptation we might have to fear. Listen, God's going to keep working out His future program in, by, by which we know we're already on the winning side. Amen. Let us, let us trust Him. Let us have a confidence in his, in his working out those, uh, that bigger picture uh, through, the, through some difficulties that we may face in the coming days. Eyes closed, heads bowed.